Welcome, and thank you for choosing MediaVision, the world's leading supplier of multimedia hardware for personal computers. This video will show you how to install the sound card and CD-ROM drive that came in this kit. Although adding a new card and disk drive to a computer is a simple, step-by-step -step process, you may not be familiar yet with some of the techniques involved. That's why we at MediaVision have provided you this video guide to installing and using your new product. This video is divided into two sections, hardware installation and software installation. Novice computer users may wish to look at both sections, while more experienced users may be most interested in section two. Both sections are clearly marked. At significant points, we've inserted pauses so you can stop the tape and carry out a procedure. We suggest that before you start to install your kit, you view the sections on preparing your computer installing the hardware, and installing the software. Oh, and by the way, if at any time you have any questions regarding your new kit, please remember that our technical support department is standing by to help. Just call us at 1-800-638-2807. We're open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday Pacific Standard Time, and from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday Pacific Standard Time. We at MediaVision know that with the help of this video, you will have your new multimedia computer up and running, opening up a new world of fun and information. Before you start, we suggest that you take a moment to familiarize yourself with all the contents of your product. You should find in the kit a list of contents called a packing list. This will list everything that you received. Locate the installation guide the sound card in its anti-static bag, the CD-ROM drive in its box, the cable packet containing the small CD audio cable and the large interface cable, and the installation diskettes. There may be other materials in your kit which we will not cover in this video. Still, take the time to look at them. You will find additional documentation about the software included with the kit, as well as information about other multimedia products. Some popular CD programs may also come with your kit. Welcome to the first installation section, where you'll see and learn how to install your sound card and CD-ROM drive. If you're familiar with hardware installation, then you can fast forward this video to the software installation section. If you're not, don't worry. The process is simple, and we'll explain it in plain English, not technical jargon. Always remember that if you have any problems during the installation, you can call MediaVision Technical Support at 1-800-638-2807. We're going to start by showing you a clear picture of the parts that you'll be using and how they connect together. This is not how you will assemble your kit. Rather, this is a display of the parts and connections. The main parts are the sound card, which plays sounds from your computer through speakers or headphones. The card also controls the CD-ROM drive, which reads data and audio CDs. The sound card and CD-ROM drive are connected by a wide interface cable and a narrow CD audio cable. The sound is played through speakers. That's really all there is to installing your hardware. Now, we'll show you how it's done inside your computer. The installation of computer hardware is so simple that it requires only two tools, a Phillips screwdriver, a type of screwdriver with a tip that looks like a plus sign, and your computer owner's manual for reference. This video follows the MediaVision installation guide, and you will use that as a reference as well. You should be careful around certain sensitive areas of your computer. Try not to touch these parts of your computer, chips, circuits, or board surfaces. Cards plugged into your computer are also sensitive. Avoid touching any of them. There are many types of computer cases, desktops, slimline desktops, and tower style cases. Installation into any of these cases is generally the same. In this video, we will instruct you on how to install in a desktop case. Make sure the power has been turned off to all the devices attached to your computer, such as monitors or modems. 
Once everything has been turned off, remove the exterior cables attached to the front and rear of your computer. If you have a lot of different cables, make sure you mark the cables and the connectors so that you can redo the connections when you're finished. Locate the screws that hold your computer's cover. These are normally located in the rear of the computer. If you're having problems locating the screws, refer to your computer's owner's manual under Disassembly for help. It's okay if you still can't find the screws. Some computers do not use them. Your computer's manual should show you how to remove the cover. As you remove the screws, place them in an area where they won't become lost during the installation. Slowly slide the cover off the computer. While doing so, watch for loose wires and cables that might be snagged by brackets on the cover. Set the cover in a place where it will not interfere with the installation and will not be damaged. Before going further, touch a non-painted section of your silver-colored power supply box. This is to protect your computer's circuitry from static electricity. Having now properly discharged your body of static electricity, take a closer look at your computer. The parts that we are concerned with are the drive bays, the expansion slots, and the blanking plates. Let's look at the expansion slots. There are normally two types in a standard computer. These are the long 16-bit slots and the shorter 8-bit slots. Your MediaVision sound card requires a 16-bit slot. Look at your computer and find an available 16-bit expansion slot. If there is room, have your expansion card separated. This makes installation easier. Once you've found an available 16-bit expansion slot, remove the screw that holds the expansion slot cover in place. The cover that corresponds to the slot that you've picked is generally located in line with the slot. Make sure that you put the cover screw in a safe spot. You'll need it later to fasten the sound card in place. Before handling the sound card, touch an unpainted section of your power supply again. Remove the sound card from the anti-static bag, making sure you handle it by its edges. Refer to the MediaVision installation guide booklet and locate the position of the interface cable and CD audio cable connector positions on the sound card. You will need to know where they are when you connect your CD-ROM drive to your sound card. Line up the bottom of the card with the available 16-bit slot. Push the card firmly into the slot. The card should not be forced. If you feel that the card is catching on something, stop. Make sure that the card is not hitting on one of the expansion slot covers. Remove the neighboring expansion slot covers. Try a different slot. If these options do not work, refer to your computer's owner's manual under the section on Installing Peripherals or contact your computer maker's technical support department for more information. Once the card is firmly in place, take the screw that you removed from the expansion slot. Use it to fasten the sound card to your computer. Before you start, let's review. Things to remember. Safety precautions. Turn off power. Remove the cover slowly. Safety precautions. Ground yourself on the power supply. Avoid touching sensitive areas. Find an available 16-bit slot. Push the card firmly, but do not force it. Call for assistance if needed. All right, now it's time for you to install your own card. With the sound card now installed, installation of the CD-ROM drive is next. We present this in two steps, preparation and insertion. Look at the disk drive section of your computer. There should be an open space big enough for another disk drive. This is called a drive bay. On your computer cover, there is a corresponding dust cover plate called a blanking plate. You saw a blanking plate briefly in the sound card installation. Blanking plates are generally held on by screws or plastic tabs that snap off. Remove the, 
Remove the blanking plate from the cover in the location corresponding to the empty drive bay. Once you've removed the blanking plate on the cover, look at the drive bay. If there is a blanking plate on the drive bay itself, remove it. Blanking plates on your drive bay are either held on by screws or solder joints that snap off. If your computer does not have screws holding in the blanking plate, check your computer's manual under Installing Drives or contact the manufacturer's technical support staff to find out how to remove the blanking plate. Computers will sometimes have floppy diskette drives or other devices that mount on the sides of the drive bays. These are usually held on by screws or they hang on the drive bay itself. You'll need to remove these devices before removing the blanking plate or mounting the CD-ROM drive. Now you'll be able to see if mounting rails are necessary to mount the CD-ROM drive. To tell if you'll need mounting rails or not, look inside your drive bay. This drive bay does not require mounting rails. If there are long straight grooves running from the back of the bay to the front, as in this drive bay, then you'll need mounting rails. Now, pull your CD-ROM drive out of the packaging. Your CD-ROM drive kit comes with plastic mounting rails. Some computers, though, require special mounting rails that come with the computer. If so, they will already be attached to the drive bay. Unscrew them and attach them to your CD-ROM drive. Using the plastic mounting rails that come in your CD-ROM drive kit is simple. Just place the mounting rails, one on each side, and put one screw in the front and rear of both sides of the drive, four screws total. It's important that you use the screws provided with your CD-ROM drive kit. Using screws other than the ones provided may cause damage to the CD-ROM drive. Tighten the screws until just snug. Do not over-tighten the screws, as this can also damage the CD-ROM drive. Now let's review step one of the CD-ROM drive installation. Remember, remove the blanking plate for the empty drive bay. Check to see if you need mounting rails. If so, what type of mounting rails do you need? Use the screws that come with the CD-ROM drive. Do not over-tighten the screws. Now we will complete the CD-ROM drive installation by attaching the cables and inserting the CD-ROM drive into the computer. First, ground yourself again on the power supply. Now look at the back of your CD-ROM drive. This connector is where power is fed into the drive. Look inside your computer and find a free power connector that will fit into the connector in the back of your CD-ROM drive. Note that the power connector in the computer is shaped so that it fits only one way into the CD-ROM drive. Notice that there are two types of power connectors, large and small. Look at your CD-ROM drive to see what type you need. It will normally be labeled, so it should be easy to find. If you have the right type of power connector free, label it. You will attach it after you put your CD-ROM drive into your computer. If there are no connectors free in your computer, then you will need to use a Y power cable. To use the Y cable, you'll need to remove one of the power cables from your five and a quarter inch floppy drive or any other drive that doesn't require constant power. A tape backup unit is a good candidate for this. Only as a last resort should you use the power connector to your hard drive. Remove the power cable from the device and attach the single end of the Y cable to the power cable. Attach one of the two ends back to the device. The other end will be attached to your CD-ROM drive. Now, connect the CD audio and interface cables to the CD-ROM drive. Locate the CD audio cable. It's a thin round cable with a small connector on each end. Look at the rear of your CD-ROM drive. 
you'll notice a small connector where one of the ends of your CD audio cable will fit. Notice that the CD audio cable will only fit one way. Connect the CD audio cable to the CD-ROM drive. Now, find the long, flat, gray cable. This is the interface cable. Notice that it has a line of colored dots along one edge. You'll notice when looking at the black connectors on the ends of the interface cable that they have a small raised section on them. This is called the key. The key on the connector fits into a slot or indentation on the connector at the back of the CD-ROM drive, ensuring that the two pieces can connect only one way. Connect the end of the interface cable to the CD-ROM drive. If your interface cable is not keyed this way, refer to the MediaVision installation guide for instructions or call MediaVision technical support. It's important that you connect the cable properly. To install the CD-ROM drive into the drive bay, first pass the cables into the drive bay until they emerge inside the computer. Then slide the CD-ROM drive into the drive bay. If your drive uses mounting rails, you have to make sure that they line up with the grooves in the drive bay. Slide it into the drive bay until it's flush with the other devices. For drive bays that do not use mounting rails, use the screws that come with the CD-ROM drive kit to attach the CD-ROM drive to the sides of the drive bay. Remember not to over-tighten the screws. If the screws are over-tightened, it can cause the CD-ROM drive to malfunction. You can now replace your floppy drive and other devices. Remember, attach the cables to the CD-ROM drive. They attach only one way. Slide the CD-ROM drive into the drive bay. If necessary, attach the CD-ROM drive to the drive bay. Replace other devices. Okay, now insert your own CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM drive and sound card are now installed in your computer. Now you must connect them together and connect speakers to the sound card. Connect the CD audio cable to the sound card. Then locate the interface data connector on the sound card. It has two rows of pins. Make sure to observe the key on the interface cable connector and the indentation on the sound card. If the data connector on your sound card isn't keyed, then you'll need to find what we call pin 2. This is a connector pin with a label or etched 2 next to it. Once you've found this pin, align the connector of the interface cable so that the colored dots on the cable are next to pin 2. Now, connect the power cable to the CD-ROM drive. Let's review. Things to remember. Make sure you observe the keying and indentations on all the connectors. Connectors that are shaped or keyed can only go on one way. The colored dots on the interface cable always point to pin 2. Connect the power cable to the CD-ROM drive. The hardware installation is almost done. Make sure that all your cables are connected correctly and are secure. Take your computer's cover and slide it slowly back on. Make sure none of your new or existing cables become snagged or pinched. The final step in assembling your multimedia kit is to attach the speakers. The sound card will have either three or four small round connector holes called jacks. If your sound card has three jacks, then plug your speakers or headphones into the middle jack labeled out. If your sound card has four jacks, then plug your speakers or headphones into the jack furthest from the multi-pin joystick connector. 
You're now ready to reattach the rest of your exterior cables to their appropriate connectors and to power on your computer to start the software section of the installation. Let's review. Once again, if you have any troubles with the installation, you can call MediaVision's technical support for help. Things to remember. Make sure all interior cables are connected correctly and securely. Make sure not to snag or pinch cables when replacing the cover. Make sure your speaker and all other exterior cables are connected properly. The Quick Start Install program configures your new multimedia features so that they work with other features already installed in your computer. To start installing the software, turn on your machine. If you're in Windows, you must exit from Windows. Do not run the Quick Start Install program in Windows or from a DOS shell in Windows. To exit from Windows, hold down the Alt key and then press the F4 function key. You should then be back at the drive letter prompt in DOS. Some computers run a DOS shell, a program that makes it easy to navigate in DOS. The shell program has an exit option. Select this option. Now, before you begin the install, check your speakers. Make sure that they are plugged in to your sound card. If your speakers are not set up correctly, you will not be able to hear the test tones that the Quick Start Install program plays. These tones are the key indicator that the installation has been successful. Insert the first installation diskette. Switch to the floppy drive by typing its drive letter followed by a colon. Type install at the prompt and press enter. The Quick Start Install program will now ask you several questions. The order of the questions may vary, but you will always be asked the name of the directory that should contain the MediaVision software, whether or not you have Windows, the name of the directory where Windows is installed. The Quick Start Install program automatically displays answers that work for most computers. It then waits in case you wish to change what's displayed. Make sure that these answers are correct before you select them. Write down the name of the MediaVision software directory. Whether or not you change the answer, always confirm your answer by pressing Enter. After the preliminary questions, the Quick Start Install program copies files to your hard disk. The progress of the copy is displayed on the screen. Some files are stored on the diskette in a compressed format. The Quick Start Install program expands these and writes them to the hard disk. As the computer tests and configures your sound card, it will play voices or tones on your speakers. This will indicate that the program has successfully configured your computer. The final screen displays how the Quick Start Install program has configured your computer. Write down this configuration on your paper. It's valuable information that you'll need if you change your computer settings in the future. To finish the installation, be sure to accept the settings by pressing Enter. The Quick Start Install program will display a message as it updates some DOS and Windows files. The Quick Start Install program will then display a message, Install has finished modifying your system. Press F3 to exit. Now press the F3 key to exit. Now restart your computer for the installation to be loaded and take effect. We'll pause here. Do the installation as we've just described and then restart the tape. Congratulations, you've successfully installed your multimedia upgrade kit. Now it's time to enjoy this new world of fun and information. Before we finish though, I'd like to share with you some ways in which you can reach us at MediaVision Technical Support. The easiest way is to call us at 1-800-638-2807. We're open seven days a week to accept your call. 
Our hours are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. At MediaVision, we place a strong emphasis on customer support, and we are very proud of our outstanding service levels. If you need additional help with your MediaVision products, please don't hesitate to call us. Here's some information that will help us answer your question more quickly. Please be prepared to tell us the name of the MediaVision product you have, the brand name or processor type of your computer, which version of DOS you have, the information you copied down during your installation, what problem or question you have, what you've done already to solve any problems. Here's some other ways to contact us. Modem users can contact us on CompuServe. To reach our forum, just type Go Media Vision. Modem users can also call the Media Vision Electronic Bulletin Board at 510-770-0527. From all of us at Media Vision, thanks for choosing us as your multimedia hardware supplier. Thank you.